Patti LaBelle, known initially as Patricia Lewis Holt, is a celebrated figure in American R&B music, acclaimed for her role as a singer, songwriter, and actress. Garnering the title, Godmother of Soul, she commenced her musical odyssey in the early 1960s as the frontwoman of the vocal ensemble Hattie LaBelle and the Bluebells, later renamed LaBelle during the 1970s. Their pinnacle came with the iconic chart-topper, Lady Marmalade. Following the group's dissolution in 1976, LaBelle embarked on a prosperous solo venture. Highlighted by her debut album, which received critical acclaim and included the unforgettable track, You Are My Friend, she rose to mainstream solo prominence in 1984. This ascent was fueled by hits such as, If Only You Knew, Love, Need, and Want You, later sampled in 2002's Dilemma, New Attitude, and Stir It Up. Her solo journey reached its zenith with the 1986 release of the chart-topping album Winner In You, which featured the acclaimed duet On My Own with Michael McDonald. Throughout her remarkable seven-decade career, Patti LaBelle has amassed a global record sale exceeding 50 million and has been bestowed with numerous accolades. These include inductions into esteemed institutions such as the Grammy Hall of Fame, Hollywood Walk of Fame, Black Music and Entertainment Walk of Fame, and Apollo Theater Hall of Fame. Additionally, Rolling Stone recognized her among the 100 Greatest Singers. Notably, on June 26, 2011, she was honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award and the BET Awards. LaBelle is acclaimed for her soprano voice, renowned for its powerful projection, expansive modal register range, and dynamic rendition. Beyond her musical triumphs, LaBelle has left an indelible impression in acting, with notable appearances in the Oscar-nominated film A Soldier's Story and television series including A Different World and American Horror Story, Freak Show. Additionally, she starred in her television sitcom, Out All Night, in 1992. Patti LaBelle, born Patricia Louise Holt on May 24, 1944, was raised in the Eastwick neighborhood of southwest Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She was the second youngest of three children born to Henry and Bertha Robinson Holt and the fourth youngest among five siblings. Her siblings included Thomas Hogan, Jr., 1930-2013, Vivian Hogan, 1932, Barbara, 1942, and Jacqueline Jackie, a 1945 birth. LaBelle's mother was a domestic worker, and her father was a performer who worked on the railroad and at nightclubs. However, LaBelle's early years were ruined by her parents' violent divorce, which she subsequently detailed in her memoirs. Jackie Wilson molested LaBelle, then 12 years old, in the Brooklyn Brevoort Theater in the 1960s, just after her parents' divorce. She broke off her engagement to Otis Williams, a founding member of The Temptations, in 1964 because of concern that he would limit her professional options. Patti LaBelle wed Armstead Edwards, a longtime friend and school teacher, in 1969. After that, Edwards took on the manager role for her until their formal separation in 2000 and eventual divorce in 2003. Born in 1973, Zui Kai Edwards is their son and is LaBelle's career manager. LaBelle struggled with postpartum depression following Zui's birth, but singer-songwriter Laura Nero helped her through caring for Zui. LaBelle is the grandmother of two girls and one boy through Zui, whose name means good in Swahili. Tragically, Patti LaBelle lost several family members at an early age. Her father, Henry Holt Jr., died of emphysema and Alzheimer's disease in 1989 at the age of 70, and her mother, Bertha Holt, died of diabetes in 1978 at the age of 62. All three of her sisters also died young. At the age of 43, Vivian Hogan Rogers passed away from lung cancer in 1975. Barbara Holt Parafoy, 40, passed away from colon cancer in 1982. And then, three months before her father's passing in July 1989. A distraught LaBelle filmed the music video for If You Ask Me To, crying in multiple frames, the day after the singer buried Jackie. On the day Jackie would have turned 44, the video was recorded. LaBelle paid tribute to her sister Jackie on her Burnin' album from 1991. 
During her 1991-1992 concert tour, she sang her well-known performance of the song Wind Beneath My Wings. Patti LaBelle claimed that as a result of her parents and sisters passing away too soon. She expressed in her book her concern that she would not live to be 50. But the singer claimed that after reaching that age, she felt as though her life had only just begun. She was given a diabetes diagnosis a year later and went on to represent several organizations that battle the condition as a spokeswoman. LaBelle has a house in the Wynwood neighborhood of Philadelphia and properties in Los Angeles and Eleuthera, Bahamas. She is an honorary member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. Patti LaBelle performed solo two years after joining the Beulah Baptist Church Local Church Choir at 10. Growing up, she also listened to jazz and other secular music genres like R&B. After winning a talent competition at John Bartram High School when she was 16 years old, she and her classmates Jean Brown, Yvonne Hogan, and Johnny Dawson formed the Ordettes, her first singing group, in 1960. The group, which had LaBelle as the front woman, gained popularity in the community before two of its members were married, and another was compelled to leave by her father, a devout Catholic. Just one semester separated LaBelle from John Bartram High School in Philadelphia in 1962, but she eventually returned to complete her graduation when she was in her mid-thirties. Cindy Birdsong, Sarah Dash, and Nona Hendricks, the latter from a former singing group, joined the Ordettes in 1962. Harold Robinson, the record label proprietor, was drawn to the group and, although initially hesitant about LaBelle's looks, consented to work with her after hearing her performance of I Sold My Heart to the Junk Man. After a legal battle, the band changed their name to Patti LaBelle and the Bluebells, and LaBelle took on a new last name that means, The Beautiful, in French. Their breakthrough record, Down the Isle, was out in 1963 and succeeded in 1964 with a famous You'll Never Walk Alone performance. They signed with Atlantic Records in 1965 after moving to New York and releasing several singles, including All or Nothing and Take Me for a Little While. The group kept changing their roster and label, but they kept developing musically, adding funk, rock, and psychedelic soul elements. Vicky Wickham helped the group alter their sound and image, and they went with the more straightforward name La Belle. Their 1971 U.S. tour as The Who's opening act brought them much more recognition and allowed them to show off their wide range of musical influences. In 1971, the trio released La Belle, their debut album, following their signing with Warner Brothers Records. With this album, they broke away from their original girl group sound and adopted a psychedelic soul sound with gospel, funk, rock, and soul elements. The same year, they also contributed backing vocals for Laura Nero's album, Gonna Take a Miracle. With their 1972 album Moonshadow, they continued the gritty vibe from their debut record. After signing with Epic Records in 1974, LaBelle found economic success even though their third album, Pressure Cookin', didn't produce a hit. Their album Nightbirds fused rock, glam, soul, and funk, produced by Alan Toussaint. With the release of the big smash single, Lady Marmalade, which peaked at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and sold over a million copies, the album was recognized with an RIAA Gold Award and inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. Taking advantage of Lady Marmalade and Night of the Living, they created history in October 1974 by being the first rock and roll vocal group to perform at the Metropolitan Opera House. Their following two albums, Chameleon in 1976 and Phoenix in 1975 received positive reviews but did not result in hit singles that topped the charts. Disagreements inside the group over artistic direction eventually led to a significant incident in December 1976 when Nona Hendricks suffered a nervous breakdown while performing in Baltimore. The group then decided to break up. In 1977, Patti LaBelle signed with Epic Records and released her debut album of the same name, marking the beginning of her solo career. This album featured the spiritual hymn You Are My Friend alongside disco favorites like Joy to Have Your Love and Dance With Me. Throughout the 1980s, Epic issued three additional albums in quick succession. Delicious, Fine With Me, and Released. Following four Epic Records albums, LaBelle joined Philadelphia International Records. 
She recorded a noteworthy rendition of Over the Rainbow on the CD The Spirits in it. Her first Grammy Award nomination came from her performance on the Grover Washington duet The Best Is Yet to Come in 1982. Her breakthrough album, I'm In Love Again, was released in 1983 and included top 10 R&B hits like Love, Need and Want You. If Only You Knew, the latter of which became her first number one single as a solo artist in early 1984, she achieved new heights in her solo career. Hits like Love Has Finally Come At Last and A Soldier's Story, her cinematic debut, contributed to her ongoing success. Patti LaBelle's songs Stir It Up and New Attitude from the soundtrack of the movie Beverly Hills Cop helped her become even more well-known in 1984. Her first crossover solo song, New Attitude, peaked at number 17 on the Billboard Hot 100. Her appearances on TV programs like Motown Returns to Apollo and Live Aid cemented her reputation as a pop artist, resulting in a televised special of her own. Their 1971 U.S. tour as The Who's opening act brought them much more recognition and allowed them to show off their wide range of musical influences. In 1971, the trio released La Belle, their debut album, following their signing with Warner Brothers Records. With this album, they broke away from their original girl group sound and adopted a psychedelic soul sound with gospel, funk, rock, and soul elements. The same year, they also contributed backing vocals for Laura Nero's album, Gonna Take a Miracle. With their 1972 album Moonshadow, they continued the gritty vibe from their debut record. After signing with Epic Records in 1974, LaBelle found economic success even though their third album, Pressure Cookin', didn't produce a hit. Their album Nightbirds fused rock, glam, soul, and funk, produced by Alan Toussaint. With the release of the big smash single, Lady Marmalade, which peaked at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and sold over a million copies, the album was recognized with an RIAA Gold Award and inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. Taking advantage of Lady Marmalade and Night of the Living, they created history in October 1974 by being the first rock and roll vocal group to perform at the Metropolitan Opera House. Their following two albums, Chameleon in 1976 and Phoenix in 1975 received positive reviews but did not result in hit singles that topped the charts. Disagreements inside the group over artistic direction eventually led to a significant incident in December 1976 when Nona Hendrix suffered a nervous breakdown while performing in Baltimore. The group then decided to break up. In 1977, Patti LaBelle signed with Epic Records and released her debut album of the same name, marking the beginning of her solo career. This album featured the spiritual hymn You Are My Friend alongside disco favorites like Joy to Have Your Love and Dance With Me. Throughout the 1980s, Epic issued three additional albums in quick succession. Delicious, Fine With Me, and Released. Following four Epic Records albums, LaBelle joined Philadelphia International Records. She recorded a noteworthy rendition of Over the Rainbow on the CD The Spirits in it. Her first Grammy Award nomination came from her performance on the Grover Washington duet The Best Is Yet to Come in 1982. Her breakthrough album, I'm in Love Again, was released in 1983 and included top 10 R&B hits like Love, Need and Want You. If Only You Knew, the latter of which became her first number one single as a solo artist in early 1984, she achieved new heights in her solo career. Hits like Love Has Finally Come At Last and A Soldier's Story, her cinematic debut, contributed to her ongoing success. Patti LaBelle's songs Stir It Up and New Attitude from the soundtrack of the movie Beverly Hills Cop helped her become even more well-known in 1984. Her first crossover solo song, New Attitude, peaked at number 17 on the Billboard Hot 100. Her appearances on TV programs like Motown Returns to Apollo and Live Aid cemented her reputation as a pop artist, resulting in a televised special of her own. LaBelle joined with MCA Records after terminating her deal with Philadelphia International Records. In 2008, Patti LaBelle briefly reunited with her fellow LaBelle members for the album Back to Now. She kept up her varied career by making television appearances, performing Broadway musical parts, and releasing successful albums, such as her debut jazz album and gospel album.
She was recognized with multiple accolades and prizes for her services to entertainment and music, including Grammy Awards and honors from the BET and World Music Awards. Recorded on March 6, 2014, the Women of Soul in performance at the White House concert was sponsored by President Barack Obama at the White House and featured performances by LaBelle and Aretha Franklin, among others. Patti LaBelle was given a street name, Patti LaBelle Way, between Locust and Spruce Street in Philadelphia, on July 2, 2019. It was confirmed that she participated as Flower in the second season of The Masked Singer. Along with her accomplishments, LaBelle has demonstrated a strong commitment to promoting peace through initiatives to improve access to housing, employment, healthcare, education, and the legal system. She has also actively participated in several charitable endeavors and foundations. She has devoted her time and energy to serving on multiple national boards that promote health-related, such as cancer, AIDS, diabetes, and Alzheimer's disease. Her powerful platform has allowed her to advocate for the rights and treatment of the gay and lesbian community as well as to bring attention to the AIDS pandemic. LaBelle has demonstrated her solidarity with the LGBT community by attending multiple Pride events and being a vocal community supporter. She has maintained her status as a well-known personality in the entertainment sector by juggling her work as an author, singer, and actress. She has continued touring and working with different performers, demonstrating her adaptability and long-lasting influence on popular culture. That's all the information we know about Patti LaBelle in this video. I appreciate your viewing. Please feel free to like and share this video with your social media networks. Remember to subscribe, please. It's the only way to ensure that you get all of our fantastic videos in the future.